when she comes home and I do enjoy her. I don't remember the two men that come down from the island, but I'm sure you can watch the thing that was bought. No, we've got some questions. No, over here on the corner. Fiona, Fiona, you told me that you got a message. How'd you hear about your sister being in the back here? Mom went up there. Well, there were people that did go up there, you know, to check on you during the week. And I don't remember who who told us that they were coming home that day, but they were on their way home. So uh, I don't remember reading it in the paper. I just remember somebody coming and saying that they were coming home. Oh, that was, that spread like wildfire from you and them to hold Well, <laughs> there was four boys up there that just finished school. Ralph, 
Russell, Joe Cranston, and these other two boys played ball. I don't remember their names. But they come right on the Hogan boy and spread the word. Then he said this. Yeah. Well, back then, everybody knew everybody else, you know. We, it was just like one big happy family or one crossed up family. Whichever way you want to see it. But, uh, well, I can see where we were wrong in trying to get them to come out to me. You can't make people do nothing. You're trying to get them to organize. Leona, you said that um, they had this COVID happen. <laughs> or well, co it was it was cool weather, and uh, cool I cool. just she said, "Well, since you're not going today, I think I'll just wear your coat." She always sleeps late anyway. You know, she's always late getting started. Well, well I wasn't late, late that morning. <laughs> you went out the door putting the coat on, though. That. So I said, well, back then we didn't have but one coat. <laughs> no, I did have another coat that actually that was, you know, a, a coat that I just wore all informally, uh, but I loved to wear it. Well, we didn't. But I didn't mind her carrying the coat on. If she'd have needed something else, I, she'd have got that too. Were you sorry that you didn't go? Well, uh, in one sense of the word, I was, but I felt like... I'm sorry, just say what I was sorry, I didn't go. Okay. Okay. But I had a sister at home that needed me to. But you were telling me... I, I was sense. sorry that I, did, I couldn't go and be with Eddie May. Well, we always, uh, we've always done things together. The family stuck together, really. Of course, my daddy was up there, but he was a sick man when they got him. But, and then, since we left East Memphis, we were, I run across people now and tell me about my mom. My mother. She did. She didn't let us go anywhere because she was afraid we'd work. And, but we could bring anybody home with us if we wanted to. Now we were talking with some ladies over in uh, Newnham. They obviously had great respect for your father and for my mother too. And uh, well, some of them not been no younger than I necessarily. I did. just wondered. Uh, they, they treated him almost like, like he'd been their preacher or something, and I wondered why. He did preach occasionally. <laughs> Thought the first taught school. He was a Bible scholar. And then he, he was the last preacher he ever was. He taught school first. And he, then he was the last, well, he was a book agent next. Went all over the place selling books, but I think he read just about all the books he sold. And after that, he was last in Methodist preacher. I heard him preach one sermon. Probably didn't know when he quit. <sighs> but if I ever wanted to know a passage of scripture, I could go to him and ask him where it was. Where can I find a certain passage of scripture? He'd tell me chapter and verse. Mm -hmm. So he, I, I, I would say he was a Bible scholar because he, he knew it almost from the back, from front to back. I think you were mm -hmm. telling me a story about his uh, reading the, the reading the Tom Watson tape. Oh yeah, on, on the, he, on the when he got thing. involved in reading something. The world could have burned around him and he would never know it. And uh, they told the joke on him at uh, East Newnham and I don't doubt it one bit. He was going to Bremen, Georgia. So we had, there was a little train that run through there. That, that's the way you travel back then. 
And uh, it came at 2 o'clock, and it arrived at noon at 2 o'clock. Well, we didn't have a, we just had more or less a little uh, stand out there, we you know, for people to wait. Mm -hmm. But there was a place to sit. So he was sitting there reading his Tom Watson paper, and uh, finally he took his watch out. He said, well, it must be about time for that train. And there was another man up there at yeah, the same the time. And he train. said, that train, must the gentleman that train went through here an hour ago. He missed it. He was sitting Not right there. an hour there. ago. Well, that's it's what he told him about, about an hour ago. That. And that's just how involved he could get in something, you know, that he loved. And he did love books, and uh, if uh, he was a strict disi disciplinary man, if we wanted to say, go someplace, and our mother didn't think it was quite the thing to do, she'd say, go talk it over with, you, with your daddy. We did. And uh, usually he said no, it wasn't the place for us to be. But I said if he was reading, we could have gone on and stayed all night, and he wouldn't Not have hardly. known the difference hardly. hardly. Well, he, he would be up sometime. Papa so. liked to dance. That time they had square dances, what we call them. I never, I wasn't old enough. But when he heard a fiddler, fiddle. His feet were in the place there. So now. He was a good man. He, uh, uh, well, as I said, he was a good man. He was strict. And when he, but if he really got involved in something that he loved, he just, he just let the world go by. He didn't pay any attention to anything that went on around him. He could just shut things out that easily. How did that affect your education and your family's education? Well, now, you might think since he was an educated man that he would have been more interested in our education. We got old enough to go to work. We went to work. But when we got old enough to go to work, we went to work. Uh, one thing, I said we had a, a large family. It took a lot, you know, to feed and clothe us. My but my father did not work for a boss. He was his own boss. Uh, so that's what we did. We made our, Probably brought our little five. checks home, and uh, that took care of the family. Could you talk about his politics? Hmm. Well, if he liked a man, he would go all the way. Anything, he'd get out, you know, and uh, work for him. But if he didn't like a <coughs> politician, he just didn't like them. And he'd do everything he could against them, you know. I don't mean he, he was crooked about it, anything like that, but he always tried to make his point why you shouldn't vote for that particular person. And when the law came in for that women could go, you know, we didn't need to vote. He was he made sure that we vote. He paid he paid poll tax on me for seven years before she would vote. But I said uh, he believed in women having rights. So we didn't usually worry about it. We just voted like Papa votes. <laughs> We'd always be right. But I don't mean that he was always right, but that's what we thought. Papa knows. And he did. I said if he had uh, lived to see television come in, he'd have busted the screen out. If, uh, if the some politician <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I think he would have. It, it would infuriate him to hear, you know, he'd listen to the radio, but he would argue up a storm with it. Now, you know you're t telling a lie, you know, such stuff. He was a 
he was a real complicated man in some ways, but he was a good man. He thought everybody ought to see things like he did. I think that was his way he looked at politics. He couldn't understand why people couldn't see what was wrong with the other fellow. <laughs> I don't know how long it was after we only married. But her husband, father, and my father, seemed like much of him about the same age. They seemed different. But most farm folk called Papa an old man. Old man gentleman. He said, well, I could outrun you any day. But he had chronic bronchitis. And this was in the, they were in the last year, too. They Ms. Will said, she looked out the door and saw them two old men running, <laughs> running down the street, said she didn't know what the world was happening. But Mr. Palm come out ahead because Pop took a spell of coughing. Had to quit. And you were telling me how he got his <coughs> bronchitis. Sleeping on he the ground up uh, there. Right in Atlanta when he, they carried that truckload of people up there. But, but now, he didn't have to go. But, but if he, he went. went to the doctor. But no, he didn't. I, I think he I, thought fruit would cure him. Let me tell the story again uh, because I'm not sure we got it clear. So he was getting on the truck and the and the fellow said, you don't have to go, and, right. but he went anyway. Could That's you just right. tell that whole story just as though we'd ever heard it before? Well, when there's Eugene Talman called out the fruit as soon as he knew he was elected. And we were in Inland, Georgia, trying to get the workers to come out. And they sent it. He called out the troops at 2 o'clock in the morning, is what the little boy told me. And they convinced uh, having us to get on the truck. There's a good many men. I don't know just how many women, but some of them was from a grange sergeant. But they told that little boy, or he looked like a little boy to me, he was one of the troops. He said, Grandpa, you don't have to get on that truck. But he did. And the first night they slept on the ground with an army blanket. But they did put up tents. I don't know how many slept in one tent. Because it was, I believe it was about 100 men close to it. But there wasn't that many women. But now we were, they were not all from Hobie. But our father took a cold from that, <coughs> that first night. And he never got over it, really. But he wouldn't go to the doctor. He thought fruit would cure anything. Okay, now we're going to break for just a minute.
Okay, this now, is my... no, like this. You see where my finger is? Yeah. I want you to be that close. Okay, go on. This is Grandmother Bar, Grandmother Zimmerman, and this is Grandfather Zimmerman. And this is my mother and my father. And this is my grand, my mother's mother. And this is her father. This is Adam A. Trying to plow with a mule in the back of <laughs> Now just yes. point to your uh, point to this and tell us uh, tell us about the, how that picture got made. Which which one do you point? There, okay. my mother and father. Well, that we just didn't have a a picture of them, a late picture, and uh, we had a brother. Well, uh, one of our brothers was in service in France. We wanted to, him to have a picture mother uh, mother and father. So they went to New England and had, had this made. Oh, we did have some little snapshots. But he never wore a tie. He wouldn't wear a tie. But she wanted to slip uh, some kind of a tie on him anyway. And she got this bow tie. <laughs> she always had to fix his collar for him. and dress him really almost and then she was such a hurry to get it on him she put him on, on upside down it's an upside down bow tie but i don't know if uh, if it's really that noticeable she noticed it the first thing when it when the picture came tell us about your grandfather well, I don't know a lot about my grandfather, except I remember seeing this one with the white beard <coughs> because he was sick and they paid a visit to our house when I, I guess I was about four years old. And he died in a few weeks after they visited us. He died in 72. But he, he was just, uh, from all accounts, he was just a real good person that most people loved him. Did these people work in the mill? No, they were kind of farmers. Well, they were all farmers. there's three lawyers in the family. Yeah, and this family, she had, oh, uh, well, she part. had three sons that were lawyers and two preachers came out of that family. And one, one son was uh, almost seventy. Yeah. yeah, one son that was. Uh, I think he he had uh, almost completed his course in law. But they told. But he died as you know, just a young man. So. And uh, now all these. I don't know that much about them because they moved to Texas when I was, no, oh. before I was born. And it's all I know good. about my father's family is just the little things that he's told us and that our grandfather told us when he'd come back. To well, visit. you know, I come home. But he did, he came to visit about once ever five, five years. years. Mm -hmm. Before you told me that the Barker family looked down on cotton mill work, they were upset about that. Oh, the country the, people. Did all, it. all, uh, folk just back, you know, but before. he had. But her brother had a son leave the country about the same we did. Could you say that again about how country people felt about cotton mill workers? Well, they just felt like they were white trash. trash. <laughs> And uh, well, I, I don't really know how they how they were because when we moved to the uh, mill village, I was nine months old. My family moved to Douglasville, and there was one other child born after we moved to the what they called the cotton mill then. You know, 
It was cotton mill. Well, yeah, it was. Why do you think they, they? Why do you think they felt like that? Well, I really don't know, because uh, uh, I don't think where you live has anything to do with your character. It's the way you were brought up, law. Your childhood, you know. Bothers you. Oh, uh, but how come? I do think the way you you were reared has a lot to do with your life and the, the kind of a person you were. I don't mean that by that by having good parents that you're always perfect because I've never seen a perfect person in my life. We all make mistakes and sometimes uh, children break their parents' hearts too. But now, you people, after the uh, strike, I gather that there was a lot of ill feeling in the town. Could you talk about that? And the well, town and the mill too, and the church. It, it didn't last that long, not really. It was, it soon blew over, mm -hmm. and uh, people got back together. There were friends and neighbors like they'd always been. I don't think it really affected this town too much. I notice now that you people and the people in Noonan, I notice that now you people and the people in Noonan are having joint uh, anniversaries. Well, do you know we never, we never quit visiting, mm -hmm. visiting each other. Yeah, oh, what do you think about 200? Being at one reunion. There were 250 at the second one, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, we had the 25th this year, but it had to be moved. We met at Sportsman's Club in Hogan'sville. Do you ever talk about uh, the old times? But the, do you ever talk about the strike? I don't think, I don't think it's up. ever really come up. We just don't. don't. Could you say that again and just say, I don't think the strike had ever come up? I just don't think the strike ever comes up or would ever come up between good friends. Well, we had the no. sportsman's club started as a tri-county club. Yeah, that was three counties. But it got just be Hogan. Mm -hmm. What do you think would happen if uh, for example, this film was shown to your association. Hmm. Well, I don't think anything disastrous <laughs> would happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, for example, if we showed uh, this the stuff you've been looking at this morning to the to the club. Well, I don't th do you I think it would make that much <laughs> difference. I wouldn't know because there's some of them that wouldn't. Approved. Well, I tell you, a lot of these people that were there. Paul and Homer that took it over after we uh, had the uh, sportsman's club. Uh, you know, have died was, since mm -hmm. then because... He was uh, a little boy when we left his mm -hmm. Ed May and I are still kicking around, but that's about, we're not kicking very high. That's a woman. Not as high as we have. But I, th I think good friends if they're really good friends, they stay together, no matter what. Children we went to school with, after years and years, of, I went, I guess maybe 17, 18 years without seeing someone, and they'd refer back to Mama. <laughs> she wouldn't let us go nowhere, mm -hmm. but we could bring anybody home, and she has said, Two cakes out on the table, and some of the plates were soft. <laughs> so, uh, th 